Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day today. It's Thursday. Um, it's uh, kind of warmer out there today and uh, so that's nice. But uh, we're going to dig into, we're, getting, we're almost to, to the end of, of Proverbs. We're in chapter 30 uh, today. Uh, there's some interesting things in this chapter. It's kind of different than the others. It's, uh, uh, you might even say it's kind of curious. <laughs> Actually, we're in our devotional, the the the, uh, the title of the devotional is "Curiosity is the Fuel for Wisdom," and the, the devotional will talk about it in a little different context. But but there's some interesting things that uh, that we learn, some bits of wisdom uh, that we find in this uh, chapter that uh, are are a little bit different. But we'll get to those in a minute. So let's begin with the devotional hashtag Wisdom. Uh, again, this is day 30 of of our devotionals and. Uh, I, I really enjoyed these, and and it's uh, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of miss them when we're gone when we're done with them, but uh, we'll find something else to do together. But uh, but this devotional, uh, like I said, it's pretty good. It says curiosity is the fuel for wisdom. Curiosity killed the cat. I don't know if you've ever said that uh, little saying, but uh, uh, I know I have at different times. But it says here, have you ever said this phrase? Did you know that when you use the phrase, you used it out of context? which is interesting. You know, we always think about how curiosity can get us into trouble and those kinds of things. It says, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the popular version of this phrase is an abridged version of the longer statement that reads like this. It says, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. Uh, kind of interesting there. You know, in the one hand, the curiosity is, is dangerous, but on the other hand, uh, it can bring satisfaction. It, it can be a a good thing. And so as we get into thinking about this, this chapter of Proverbs, we're going to see how uh, curiosity actually can be a, a good thing. It says, don't get me wrong, curiosity can be a dangerous thing if it's left unchecked and is recklessly handled. Yet if it wasn't for curiosity, I can guarantee you that we would have never landed on the moon. The United States of America wouldn't be here and no one would have ever tried a mushroom to see if they were delicious or deadly. Uh, <laughs> When, when curiosity is channeled in the right direction, it's an extremely beneficial force in our lives. Uh, have you ever thought of it like that? That's kind of an interesting thing uh, that, that, that the author of this, this puts up uh, for us to think about. Is, is curiosity, have you ever thought of it as being actually beneficial and maybe even necessary for our lives? That a lot is accomplished because of curiosity. It says, I would go so far as to say that curiosity is the fuel that runs wisdom. It's what helps us desire wisdom. Curiosity is what causes us to want to know, know more. It says, without curiosity, we can have no wisdom. Being curious about the right thing, though, is the difficult part to keep in check. And, and that's true. Sometimes we get curious about the wrong things. And uh, I think about a mouse that's approaching a mouse trap. And maybe it smells, we, you know, sometimes I've used peanut butter or cheese or whatever. And, and that mouse is so curious, he's got to have that, whatever it is that's on that. And then when he goes to get it, uh, he, he, you know, the, the trap, uh, you know, goes off and he's uh, caught, uh, even killed. And uh, just something to think about. Curiosity can, can be harmful to us, but it can be good. And as I was thinking about this, I, I was thinking about... Uh, uh, well, my wife's grandmother, we just had her, her funeral service uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, thinking about how curious she was, that, you know, she was in her 90s, and even before that, she was so curious about just everything, and, and go to visit her, and, you know, she'd want to know the details of, of things going on in my life, in our ministry, in our family. Uh, if we had gone on a trip, she'd want to know all about it. And she just had a curiousness, and, and she passed that along to my father-in-law as well. He has that, and, and my wife, too, to a lesser extent, probably. And, and even my girls, have, that's one thing that they got from that side of the family. It's just, just a, a curiousness about life. Uh, it's an interest in, in, uh, in others and what others are doing and, and, and f seeing what they can learn uh, from other people. And, and I, I thought that's a, that's a neat thing. And, and uh, it's very unique, I think, in, in our world today. So so many people, and like I said, I, I think one of the things I said at her service as I spoke was that the fact that 
you know, it, it showed she, Jennifer's uh, grandmother was, was always wanted to build bridges to people. She always wanted to find things she had in common. And I think that was part of her curiosity. When you talk to her, she, she wanted to build that connection. And it's just a neat thing, but it, but, but it kind of started with curiosity. And so I, I think curiosity can be a really a, a good thing for us. Uh, and and well, let me get back to the devotional and, and he'll explain a little bit more uh, about that. It says, we have so many messages, stories, and so much eye candy constantly berating us. Uh, I've talked about that a lot in recent weeks. So many voices trying to get our attention in our world and our culture today. So that it's easy to become curious about the wrong things. Recently, I heard some great advice to combat this very natural tendency to be distracted by less important things. The advice was, we need to focus on nuance over novelty. Uh, so many times in our world today, we get caught up in, in novelty. We want what sparkles. Uh, we want what's pretty. We want what's, uh, you know, flashy. Uh, but we need to focus on nuance, the the details. The, the, and like I said, that's what kind of what Jennifer's grandma was so good at. She was good at, at seeking the details, of looking for the details of, of life and, and wanting to learn more. She kind of had this thirst for knowledge, thirst for, uh, you know, knowing, knowing more. This is what, what they were saying is that, that if you want to gain wisdom, then you need to learn to focus on the important things of life from different angles. Then as you look at the different angles or nuances, you'll be able to gain a deeper level of wisdom from your curiosity that you didn't have before. Uh, like I said, I mentioned on there, landing on the moon, and, and I just can't help but think about all the different ways, all the, you, know, you think of NASA, one of the things you think about are how, how much they just evaluate everything from every different angle and, and come at it from, you know, if there was a problem and, uh, you know, they, they come at it from every different, every possibility, every eventuality, and they, they sort of analyze and reanalyze and, and all those things till they have a full understanding, a full uh, wisdom, deeper level of wisdom that you didn't have before without curiosity that you wouldn't have. Uh, so you're probably wondering where God would want you to direct your curiosity. Lucky for you, Proverbs 30 verse 5 has some great advice. It says, every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. If you're looking for a place to be curious, the best place that you could start would be by being curious about what God has said through the Bible. Uh, and I would just add sort of in general the, the things of God. If you're curious about the things of God and dig deeper, uh, it'll help you grow in your relationship with the Lord. If you're willing to to just be curious about him and about who he is. And, uh, you know, I, I think of, uh, it reminds me of a guy one time was talking about the difference between, I've shared this before in church, but the, the difference between snorkeling and, and going scuba diving. Snorkeling, you stay at the surface and you just at the, at the surface and, and, and mention the Great Barrier Reef. You go to the Great Barrier Reef, you go snorkeling, you look down and you can see a lot, but you can't see everything. But if you, if you go scuba diving, you can, you dig, you go down in, go deeper and you can see so much more and have so much more knowledge. And, and I remember hearing this guy talk about how, you know, in our relationship with the Lord, we, we need to be scuba divers, not just snorkelers that just kind of stay at the surface, but actually dive down deep and, and dig into more and more of the Lord. There, there's plenty for us to, we can never come to the end of, of new things with the Lord. His, you know, uh, you know, there's always more to learn. We, we can never learn all there is to learn about the Lord. And so, uh, you know, we, we can, can dig deep and keep going deeper and deeper and deeper with him. And, and so that, that's where curiosity comes in. Curiosity is what will help us, uh, to keep, to keep going deeper, to keep looking for more and more and more of him. And, and, and like, like it says here in his word, his, his word is flawless. So we can, can look to his word and look, look deeper and deeper and, and find more and more, uh, good stuff for us to feast on. So what, what, what you will find is an incredible journey that leads you to deeper and deeper curiosity about what God is doing in the world. When you stay curious, especially about Scripture, and choose nuance over novelty, you will gain a level of satisfaction that is much more than any cat could ever find. Uh, you'll, you'll find a, a life that is uh, uh, so much more full and uh, so much uh, more filled with, with love, with God's love and with His presence 
uh, in your life as you go deeper with him. Well, let's dig into Proverbs chapter 30. Uh, again, this, one, this one's a little different than uh, some of the others. This says, uh, the, the heading says, saying of sayings of Agur. Uh, and it begins, the sayings of Agur, son of Jekka, an inspired utterance. Uh, this man's utterance to Ethel. Uh, there's a lot of different opinions on what that is or who that is, Ethel. Uh, it, it's some, uh, or Ithiel, uh, a lot of people say it, it's related to that, has, has to do with an angel, that kind of thing, the, the yell in the Hebrew is, has to do with an angel. I, I don't, you know, I'm not real sure on all that, but, uh, uh if you want to do a study, you can dig into what Ithiel, uh, or Ithiel means, uh, in, in, in Proverbs 30, but, uh, I, I don't think that's as important as, as the, the, the proverbs, the wisdom that is uh, found in this, but but like I said, it's a little little different, a little bit curious. Uh, this is a, this man's utterance to Ithiel. I am weary, God, but I can prevail. I, I think that's a good a good prayer for all of us uh, in in this day and age. You know, I think a lot of us are kind of weary of COVID and weary weary of the election and weary of so many other things. Uh, you know, and, and I know some are going through more difficult things than, than I am right now. They have other stuff compounded on top of, of all of the other stuff that's just in our culture. But but with the Lord, I'm weary, God, but with you, I can prevail. With you, I can make it through. What an awesome promise that is and an awesome prayer that is to pray. Lord, I don't, I don't know what's next. I don't know what's next in, in 2020, but with you, I can prevail. I can make it through. Verse 2, surely I am only a brute, not a man. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom. And, and it's being a little uh, humble there probably because there's some good wisdom that's going to come uh, over the next next few words. Uh, Nor have I attained to the knowledge of the Holy One. And, and that's, there again, there's no none of us can attain to the knowledge of the Holy One. We can all go deeper and deeper and deeper, and there's still more deeper still. Uh, verse 4, who has gone up to heaven and come down, whose hands have gathered up the wind, who has wrapped up the waters in a cloak? Who has established all the ends of the earth? Who? What is his name and what is the name of his son? Surely you know. And, and again, this is just the idea here is that just sort of in humility, recognizing who God is and who we are not. <laughs> we are not God. And just recognizing our place in that. And, and so that's kind of a, a precursor to the wisdom that's about to come. It says, every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Uh, again, sort of recognizing that back to I'm weary, God, but I can prevail. I can make it through. Every word of God is false. He's a shield to those who take refuge in him. We need to take refuge in him and in his word. Uh, every word of God is, is flawless to us and so helpful to us. Uh, verse 6, do not add to his words or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. Uh, sometimes we try to add to God's word or take away from God's word and make up our own mind about certain things, but, but we just need to allow God's word to be God's word and uh, sort of hold on to that. Verse seven, two things I ask of you, Lord, do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. That's a good, good prayer for all of us. Again, there's good wisdom here. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. In other words, just give me what I need. I don't need a lot. I don't need a, you know, don't need a little. I just need what you want me to have, Lord. And, and that's a great prayer for us. Uh, you know, keep lies and falsehood far from me. And then just let me be who you want me to be. You know, give me my daily bread, what I need to sustain my life, what I need to make it through uh, daily, what I need to do to, to be able to, to, to do that uh, prevailing over all the things that I face in, in my life. Verse 9, otherwise I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? You know, if you have too much, you're going to say, hey, Lord, I don't need you. I don't, you know, I I, I'm, uh, <laughs> I can make it on my own. Or, says, or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. So I need enough. Lord, let me have enough. Let me have what you, what my daily bread, what I need for today. Verse 10, do not slander a servant to their master or they will curse you and you will pay for it. Uh, you know, be careful what you say. Be person of integrity, uh, person of grace. Uh, do what you need to do. Say what you need to say. Verse 11, there are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. Those who are pure in their own eyes and yet are not cleansed of their filth. Those whose eyes are ever so haughty, 
whose glances are so disdainful, again, full of pride, full of, uh, uh, you know, themselves. Uh, and it, it's, it doesn't work. Those whose teeth are swords, those whose jaws are set like knives, those who, you know, say things, just, just run at the mouth and, and are quick to, to put people down, quick to become angry. We've been talking about that a lot in recent days. To devour the poor of the earth and the needy from, from among mankind. Uh, people are not a people of justice. They're not a person of justice. They just, just run over whoever they need to run over and uh, that kind of thing. Verse 15, the leech has two daughters. Give, give, they cry. <laughs> there are three things, and it goes into the list of, of several of these things like this. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. Uh, the grave, the barren womb, land, which is never satisfied with water and fire, which never says enough. Uh, you know, always want more. Things that are never satisfied. The, the grave, people are always dying. Uh, you know, there's, it's just a reality. The land is just never satisfied. It always wants more rain. Uh, kind of an interesting, like I said, this is kind of a curious, there's some curious stuff in this chapter, uh, which, which I find interesting. Verse 17, the eye that mocks a father that scorns an aged mother will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by the vultures. Uh, kind of an interesting, <laughs> uh, again, we see this throughout Proverbs, just some, some fascinating imagery. Uh, there, but again, this is this is a principle. It, I mean, it's not you know, it's 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 not necessarily it's not necessarily a, a, somebody that mocks their father or mother or whatever is going to have their eyes pecked out. Uh, it's not like that. But the reality is, uh, there's 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 a blessing that comes when we bless our our parents, and there's a uh, you know there's sort of a, you know negative things, not good things happen when we're uh, you know when we mock, when we scorn. Uh, our parents. Uh, verse 18, there are three things that are too amazing for me, four that I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky. Uh, it is interesting the way an eagle flies. My daughter Mary loves her eagles and, and we, we always, anytime we go anywhere, we got to be on the lookout for eagles, uh, that kind of thing. And, and it is, it's so amazing to watch them soar, watch them fly and, and so powerful in their wings. And, uh, you know, we, we Mary's taught me that, uh, uh, you know, vultures, they, they have a tendency to go like this and eagles don't do that because they're so powerful and so strong. Uh, they just, you know, go, go steady through the sky. Kind of interesting there. Uh, the three things are too amazing for me. The first is the eagle in the sky, the way of a snake on a rock, the way a snake makes its way. You know, it's always, it's fascinating. I don't like snakes, but it is fascinating to watch them move. Uh, then the, the way of a ship on the high seas, again, the way it, you know, it just makes its way uh, with the wind or whatever. Uh, the way of a man with a young woman. I, I love, <laughs> it's fascinating way. He brings it back around to that in the end there. The way of a man with a young woman. There's, there's <laughs> I think there's a lot of humor uh, as we go through some of this in Proverbs. And, you know, it, you know the fourth thing is what he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand the way of a man with a young woman. Uh, as a man, it's, it is hard to understand women sometimes. Uh, I think that's the point there. But anyway, verse 20, this is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I've done nothing wrong. Uh, and a lot of people are like that. People that sin, they don't realize, they don't, they don't want to admit they've done anything wrong. And, uh, you know, adulterous woman, she, she obviously has done wrong, but she doesn't see it, doesn't, doesn't believe it. Verse 21, under three things, the earth trembles, and under four, it cannot bear up. So the earth trembles under a servant who becomes king, a godless fool who gets plenty to eat, a contemptible woman who gets married, and a servant who displaces her mistress. Uh, there again, there's some stuff there. Who are you surrounding yourself with? What kind of life are you living? Are you living a life of integrity? Uh, just, just some things to think about. Verse 24, four things on earth are small, yet are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. And while, you know, and saying ants are little strength, I, from what I understand, an ant is, is just about as strong or stronger than any creature uh, in and of itself, the way it can carry, you know, so much and different things like that. But, but on the other hand, you can step on an ant pretty quickly. Uh, <laughs> and, and yet they're, they're smart. They're smart to store their food in the winter or in the summer, uh, store up their food in the summer. 
Uh, verse 26, higher axes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crags. I, I wasn't real familiar with them, so I had to look that up, what a higher axe is. Uh, it's a little creature that, that they say is similar to a bunny. Uh, some some passages use, instead of using that higher axe, it's, it's a, uh, or her axe, I don't know how you say it. But anyway, uh, it's similar to a bunny, and um, but it actually is related to the elephant uh, or manatee which is interesting. That's, 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 I found that, that information, but they live on rocks and they, they make their home in the rocks and, uh, kind of interesting. They, they're, they're, I guess, pretty smart little creatures that, that, uh, like they're kind of like bunnies or kind of like maybe even a squirrel, uh, not, not super big, but they're kind of pudgy like a, like an elephant or a manatee. Uh, anyway, locusts have no king and yet they advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it's found in king's palaces. And just showing kind of the wonder of God's creation, uh, you know, how it works. Even though, you know, and just, just these animals are, are different, and yet they just kind of naturally do their thing. Uh, God created them, you know, we, yesterday and uh, last night in Bible study, we talked about it being fearfully and wonderfully made. And and for sure, all of creation is like that, fearfully and wonderfully made by the Lord. Verse 29, there are three things that are stately in their stride, four that move with stately bearing. A lion mighty among beasts who retreats from nothing, a stuttering or strutting rooster, a he-goat, and a king secure against revolt. Uh, you know, just naturally are strong, naturally at least act like they're strong. A strutting rooster, a he-goat. Uh, king secure against revolt, uh, a certain stateliness to how they, they go about it. Verse 32, if you play the fool and exalt yourself, or if you plan evil, clap your hand over your mouth. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. Uh, if you play the fool and exalt yourself, you plan evil. Uh, it's as far as churning cream produces butter, as twisting the nose produces blood. I suppose if you somehow twist your nose, you might have a nosebleed or whatever. And so... Excuse me. So stirring up anger produces strife. You can, in other words, you can be sure that that uh, you know if you stir up anger, it'll produce strife. If you play the fool and exalt yourself, if you plan evil, if you do those things, it's not going to be good for you. Uh, again, uh, how are we living? What decisions are we making? Are we living by wisdom? Are we doing living the way God wants for us? Well, I know uh, today's been a little longer, some interesting things in this chapter, a few more verses than some of the others, but uh, let's pray together as we as we wrap up. Lord, uh, again, help us to live by your wisdom. Help us to live as you, you want us to live. Uh, you desire for us to live. You, you have set up our lives to work best in these, you know, with these issues of wisdom, living according to your wisdom, according to your word. Lord, help us to do that on a daily basis, to just live for you, to live with you, for you, and just in all that we do. Help us to have a curiosity about life that just uh, draws us into wisdom, draws us closer to you. Lord, help us in these things each and every day. Thank you, Lord. We will be careful to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, get to the end of the of the, this great book of uh, uh, Proverbs tomorrow. Uh, come and join us. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you. Bye-bye.